Coming to you live in stunning 160p resolution. It's time for Destiny Down Under. Episode of the Destiny Down Under podcast. We're, uh, you know, it's been a big week. We're not quite sure what we're going to talk about. There's, uh, you know, we've all been taking it easy and just kicking back, and you know, there's not much going on. So we'll just come in and shoot the shit. As always, I am joined by Mylan, uh, former CEO of Activision, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my my other trusty co-host, Real Time. I eat 12 spring rolls before we start the podcast, Sloth. And we are joined this week by Tom, the mastermind behind Braytech.org, an excellent and incredibly useful website that we will get to talking about very, very shortly. But, dudes, how are you going? <laughs> it's, it's been a big uh, week. It's, it's this. you know, living in Australia, we get, we get to wake up to the news. You know, and and this yeah. was so left field. It was you just woke up and were like, "Holy <laughs> hell, what is going on?" You just every tweet from developers, from content creators. I mean, how many videos have been uploaded about? Is this this yeah, is not nuts. just big news for for Bungie or Destiny? This is big news for gaming. Oh, it's so, huge! It's, it's big news for business. Does anyone have any bungee stocks? (laughs) (laughs) What do they do? They would have. No, because it's privately owned. No, because it's they're not publicly traded. They're not publicly traded. traded. Okay, but I'll be jumping off your active ones. Actually, I'm keen to. I'm keen to see. Keen to see uh, if there's any. um, uh, If there's been any movement on Activision stocks, whether it's gone up or down since they got rid. Since the mate, that was in the decline. Have you seen? Have you seen their stock? Yeah, no. it, it did take a hit. It took a hit. Six I mean, percent dip. Jesus Christ! They reckon. Anyway, look, we're we, we're gonna get into talking about this. We've got a, we've got a whole segment that we're gonna just absolutely go to town and talk about every possible aspect of this that we can wrap our heads around, and probably some of it that we can't even. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so I, I was without internet for twenty four hours this week because there was a massive line break for Optus in North Queensland, um, but. Um, I, I I opened my phone the next morning. I was like, oh, yeah, everything's normal on Twitter, normal on Twitter. What? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> it, 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 like, it, it came as a shock. It legitimately came as a shock. It, it was, um, I well, like, we've reported on it before that Activision weren't happy with Bungie sales in the vanilla and then the next two DLCs and then Forsaken, they weren't happy with those sales whatsoever. But um, the fact that uh, um, the fact that this happened, like, just really, well, there's a lot of questions to be answered. For that <laughs> I mean, look at the sloth. He's nearly, so, he's nearly um, called for words. <laughs> Tom, quick, how, how did quick, you react? Quick, just quickly, man. Actually, how, what did you? Did your existence collapse? Did you feel elation? What? <laughs> Wait, what? What, what? Yeah, who did you ask? Tom, you. you. Tom. <laughs> oh, fuck. I, I didn't, uh, um, I'm with you, I Tom. I, did, I didn't hear that. I didn't nah, it's hear fine. who was asking that. It's fine. Yeah, I was completely tuned out. Um, yeah, I got goosebumps. Um, I didn't know what to feel at first, and I had ups and downs. I was like, is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? And um, then it's kind of like both of these companies coming out with statements um, saying, uh, it's mutual uh, yay good for everyone and then at the same time it's like so what's the real deal um yeah. and uh yeah god I, mean, I would love to have been a fly on the wall in those meetings yeah. that, oh, i think it may god. have been mutual been but people so are good. also people are also making the uh, assumption that bungie had the funds although destiny has been very um very profitable um, Bungie, the people have been assuming that Bungie had the funds to buy buy them out. Well, they um, they made that deal with 
Remember when we first heard of this that they wanted to self-publish? NetEase, you mean? NetEase. What Chinese that was? Consortium. Yeah. What was that deal? Like that was. It was for its own IP. That... It was for its own IP that they're going to be working on. At least at the time, it was. Who knows? These things. Fuck. I mean, yeah. they're not beholden to but, but Activision I guess, like, anymore. That, and that influx, you know, of cash was look part of. I I don't look. I don't know enough about how that that business stuff works, but. Wasn't it said that that's that that was part of self publishing, or these are like the first steps of self publishing, or something like that? Perhaps. I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, I, I mean, have to we'll, go back we'll and look get... at the article because I think Kotaku's got some stuff we'll, on it as well. We'll get back around, into, man. We'll get back into it. We'll, like, there's there's a <laughs> yeah, lot. Yeah, let's of come back to it because we haven't talked to Tom. There's yet. a lot of things that we need to speak about today <laughs> um, uh, prior to going down that rabbit hole, and it is. <sighs> A rabbit hole. Um, but uh, we, like I said, like Log said, we've got Tom um, from Braytech over here in the bottom right corner. Um, a, a utterly fantastic website. And and Tom, who are you and uh, what do you do? Oof. Uh, um, well. <laughs> Oof. Um, Oof. <laughs> uh, uh, I play Destiny on Xbox, <laughs> sort Good of start, averagely, yeah. um, uh, and I like making websites, and I kind of needed a way to kill some time, so I started building, wow, okay, so I guess um, what you're really asking is origin story for Bray Tech. Um, yeah. Give us yeah, your man. law, man. Yeah. What's the law behind Bray Tech? Oh, geez. Um, all right, so... <laughs> Bray Tech Destiny Origins. <laughs> Destiny 2 Vanilla um, like was kind of settling down. The raid had come out and stuff. And um, like Zer was like kind of a thing back then. Do you remember Zer? Yeah. Um, people were back excited when he about him popping yeah. around. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this was before uh, I'm going to use some API words now. Before vendor endpoints were available um, in the API. So before you could programmatically uh, access and query um what vendors in the game actually have um so the only way to actually like get what's they're selling um is to literally go and find him in the game as fast as possible and then like jot down what he's selling and that sort of thing mm. yeah. um so, so that was the sentence i understood out of everything else you said keep going <laughs> <laughs> um so we, mate, you know what we need to do actually we need to get like richard to come back on like low lines, low yeah, yeah. lines no, and, and, and he can interpret or you can interpret things. for each other <laughs> um so uh okay so they yeah, added um, stuff to the so you could you could basically collect information well, from I, the API without having you know to get how, a Caesar. You know how, like, not everybody wants to go and get a Caesar if, if there's no point. So you'd like you'd look up what he's selling sure. and stuff, and there's websites that like would have his sales and whatnot, his inventory. And I got really upset when I found a website um, that most people used um, was just atrocious um, from <laughs> every angle <laughs> and like had 30 different types of ads on it. And I was like, oh, I can do this better. Um, so then I tried to do that. Um, and then so that was the starting point was like yeah. basically seeing shitty websites, advertisers, you're like, that's rubbish. But yeah, now like, tell us, tell us ads. your braid tech does a lot more than tell you what, what Zer's and selling. Tell us all the features of braid tech. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Warmind came around, um, which is also around the time when vendor endpoints became available in the API, and you could programmatically um, ask the API, hey, what are, what are the vendors selling and stuff? Um, but Warmind came around, and then you remember Sleeper Nodes? Yep. Oh, boy. Yes. Um, <laughs> oh, so boy. I think that's when... <laughs> I'm trying to forget. Like, we had, we had checklists in D1 for, like, uh, maybe Mylan, I don't remember the word. You know those... Uh, not the dead ghosts, but especially the uh, things in Taken King. I think there was 45 of them that you had no. to collect. Calcified Fragments. Yeah, those. There was a great website that everybody used for Calcified Fragments, and it had links yep. to all the different YouTube yep. videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did so that. that. Was great. Mm, same. I think <laughs> everyone I was like, did that. Oh, this is great. I should make something like this one day. Um, so uh, Checklist became like a really big thing around Warmind, um, especially um, for D2, because you started to have things like sleeper nodes and uh, the latent memory fragments that you would shoot um, for uh, 
Worldline Zero and the Ghost, not the Ghost, the Sparrow. Um, so um, there was kind of a race between me and D2 Checklist, um, Dweezil, um, good guy. Um, D2 Checklist is literally um, Destiny 2 Checklists, um, and he specializes in that. Um, and uh, there was kind of a race on Reddit that morning uh, that they became available in the API. Um, and uh, we were both posting on Reddit, and uh, we were just uh, trying to get um, sleep and note checklists up as fast as possible. Um, so that was fun. Um, and uh, it kind of evolved from there. Um, I've always been really, uh, I guess you could say, I've always been really like into um, the unique uh, user interface of Destiny and the aesthetic that comes with it. So a lot of the things that I've made for it um, really uh, revolve around that unique feel that Destiny has and me trying to mimic it. It looks um, sleek, man. Yeah. It looks really mm -hmm. nice. It looks like, really good. Thank just you. to like give people a little bit more information about your checklist stuff. So I'm looking at the checklist now. You punch yeah. in your username, right? Brings yeah. up the, the the things that you found, the things that you haven't found. So the character, the thing that I'm looking at now is like the corrupted eggs. Tells me all the eggs that I've got and all the ones that I don't have. And then next to it, which I don't even notice, there's a little click button and you click it. And it goes to Lola Dev's um, yeah. website yeah. and it's got the map and it shows you where it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> not only the checklist, but then a map so you can go and have a look. Oh, so this is like... I, can't, I can't at all take credit for the map. Like Low Lines has done an, an amazing job, um, as everybody knows and should know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. recreating the maps and then adding essentially checklists on top of that. Um, his maps do perform pretty much the same tasks as what um, my checklists do, but with the added um, feature of, you know, the map. Um, yeah. But obviously different ways to consume it. Um, and uh, yeah. Um, so and the other thing that I really like about your website is your this week. I think that for me. Yeah, that's what like, I use the shit out of that. And the other thing that I really highlight. like is the clan roster thing that is fucking incredible because it's got like active oh, yeah. time and all that. <laughs> The second that like, that came into it, it well, there's the, the clan roster thing. You can go back and see when people have last logged in and all that sort of shit. It's, it's really? Inc yeah, it's, there's nothing like that on Bungie or anything like that. Well, hold on. I want to I want to rave about this 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 week tab because for me, <laughs> I'm just I, I think there are there are like different types of Destiny players. Some people that just remember all this stuff and they know it. You know, we, you've got that friend. You're like, hey, what do I need to do this week? This replaced that friend. This is like, okay, this week, flashpoints. All right, uh, what what um, gun is dropping from the escalation protocol? Oh, and what can I farm on the nightfall? Like, oh, oh what the, what um, law triumphs are available? Blows my mind. <laughs> I've got so many blank spaces. I've got so much shit to do. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's actually common feedback. It's like, <laughs> screw you. Now I know how much shit I have to do. Like um, anyone who says not enough content in Destiny, you need to, you need to have yeah, that this was, website in your when life. I first, yeah. When I first posted um, this week on Twitter, that was the caption I gave. It was like, <laughs> you can't say that about Destiny anymore. There is so many things to, to do, collect. Um, I should add, before we go on, um, that this week is uh, a collaboration between me and a few other people. Um, uh, I should have prepared this. Um, You're right. So, um, at the moment, I'm just looking at my roster to see which one of you laws of laws are pulling your weight. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's me. I'm right at the bottom. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's right at the bottom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, so there's a Destiny item manager, a dim um, dev, um, who uh, did a lot of um, the legwork. Because, um, like, um, these collections of, like, uh, triumphs and records, collectibles and things, they aren't actually, uh, like, you can't, like, say, hey, Destiny API, give me all the things relevant to this activity. So he actually um, had to go and collate um, a list of IDs for each of these different things and then arrange them in a list um so uh when it is the relevant week they do display the correct ones um you know this week so it's relevant um so he went and collected a lot of those hashes um and then 
another um, great guy. Um, his name's Alex, um, and he's German, and he uh, put the Nightfalls together. Um, so those records and those collectibles. It's, it became really apparent after he'd done that that um, there wasn't really that many Nightfall records, challenge records. Um, and personally, I wish there were more because there's pretty much only one per Nightfall. Um, so you know, once you've done that, it's like so. In that way, uh, the uh, I guess progression of Nightfalls could be a little bit deeper if they had a little bit more, like even more of a challenge. Because once you've done the challenge, it's like some of them happened accidentally too. So look, and that's look, I, I, this website. Like I look at this, and I just think the aesthetic of it is so bungee that this could be a bungee website and i just wish that bungee just or maybe they pay pay you out buy it <laughs> off you man after yeah. some fucking money that's your dream yeah. like hey dude that, you want to buy my website I, like, between hey, that bungee, and low lines that between that and low lines and it is the yeah. direct <laughs> it's fucking like, I don't know, man. hey bungee can uh now that you're uh offering your own yeah. lonesome and you're doing your independent thing you looking for some api techs <laughs> I know too. So um, <laughs> tell me, tell me, Tom, is this is this what you do for work? Are you studying? How do you fit this in your life? Like, is... oh gosh, um, would you like the long version or the short version? <laughs> Let, let's go short because we we, we yeah, want to jump enough. into the Activision as well. Um, yeah, we're gonna. So, <laughs> short version is um, I was studying um, and I'm no longer studying, um, but uh, I do enjoy uh, web development and uh, Braytech has been an excellent opportunity for me to. I hate that I'm about to use this this phrase, but hone my skills. Um, so I've learned a, <laughs> so commonly used. As I've learned a lot of new stuff um, while building it, and um, not just about um, programming, but also how to uh, deal with community um, stuff and how to handle feedback appropriately. Um, <laughs> oh, dumb, man. I'm still <laughs> learning, dude. Yeah, I'm still I, learning. I was got debated last, last I was week. Good. There's three blokes in this chat with you that you could probably share some of that shit with. <laughs> you know, like all out aggression is probably not the best way to respond to feedback. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I uh, posted a tweet. I don't want to call anyone out, but I posted a tweet. Um, I think Thursday night, um, Braytech, like I, I feel like Braytech is in a really good place now. Um, like I've been working on it for, uh, oh yeah, more than a year. Okay, um, cool. Uh, too long <laughs> um it's been a very iterative thing obviously um which i obviously forgot just now but um <laughs> there were no replies to this tweet except for one um which was when can we get this as an app or something like that and i was just like <laughs> oh every web developer's trigger <laughs> it basically is an oh, app man. if you've got an android phone you can install it as a like the same way you can with dim and things like that so on an iphone as well but they hide it away like you have to scroll for a while before you can see that you can pin it but fucking apple anyway (laughs) well well you know what every phone has a fucking web browser use a web browser don't be lazy stop being fucking lazy (laughs) I think, I think the thing I think the thing that I've come to realize through speaking to yourself Tom today and and Richard last year and having like dabbling in that community a little bit more and getting to know what you do is that like for a, for a very long time people doing what you you guys do as being sort of the unsung uh heroes in, in you like the raid secrets of tools right like you know you look at how valuable <laughs> yeah. that fucking subreddit is and then look at the way you guys can come in and build these beautiful interfaces and give people tools to go and you know make the most of their time on destiny i think it's fucking excellent and the the fact that you're all sort of building this collaborative community together and you know uh really coming at it with the high tide raises all ships mentality of look if we can work yeah, together and make things of, better and all that i think yeah. it's fucking incredible man speaking and speaking of collaborative community um the uh pretty much yeah actually i don't i don't know of any other community like destiny's api community um everybody like nigel from ishtar commander the dim crew um uh me and low lines josh from destiny sets um we all talk and we all work together and uh especially um for me um they've helped guide me um uh on multiple occasions <laughs> um in better directions when trying to uh solve a programming problem or two um and uh they've been um 
that just been really good um, for encouraging me to try new things. Um, like especially a Bray Tech. Uh, like uh, two months ago, I uh, tried something completely different that I didn't necessarily think that I was capable of doing um, programming wise, and um, their encouragement like pushed me just the the little bit that I needed them that I needed uh, to be pushed, and uh, and I took it to the next level for me. So. That's excellent, yeah, man. Um, That's excellent. It's hey, like can I, can I ask, it's like communities too. Can I Destiny ask if you, have you considered all just joining forces and making like one web, website to rule them all and just basically <laughs> taking over the internet uh, at that point? Or is- <laughs> We haven't. Uh, <laughs> we haven't. <laughs> I'll propose it. Yeah, right. No well, worries. I mean, I think the way that, I think the way that it's working at the moment is pretty, pretty slick and gives, yeah. you know, gives everyone their yeah. own little baby to look after and and and, yeah, and you get a lot of diversity and, when you get yeah. multiple people taking it from different angles too yeah. so it's true it's very true awesome yeah. all right well, well it's a great website man we recommend it to a, anyone in chat that needs a little bit of guidance with what they should be doing next in destiny it's, or, or if it's they a just feel like they, they'd love to be overwhelmed by the shit that they have not yet done in destiny yeah <laughs> guys if you're in the live chat make sure you check out um tom's twitter make sure you go and check out uh the website it is very fucking handy yep. um that website for our audio only and youtube listeners are uh braytech.org that yep. is braytech.org so make sure you go and check that out too um it, it was it was it was it, it's amazing thank you for your work <coughs> and it's a pleasure um, to be on man it's good it's good now uh, we're gonna, and, I'm gonna preface this on, well yeah. coming into the next lot of shit tom we all talk a lot yes. <laughs> and you are our guest and we will go full oh, yeah. in on talking our own opinions so if you've got See, something to say if you need thinking, to ring a bell um, or fucking bang a box together or anything to get us to shut up <laughs> That'll do. Someone step that. <laughs> um, before when um, you asked my opinion initially on the Activision thing, oh Jesus, I just saw it on the Twitch. <laughs> um, um, when you asked my opinion, I and I was like, "What's going on?" Because um, uh, I'm used to listening to you every week, so like all of a sudden <laughs> being on the people who talks, it's like. Normally that's I just fine. quietly You're mutter in it. in my cars like that's dumb sloth. Um and then <laughs> <laughs> All right, well you let's let's get into let's get into let's something that we can all kick off about. We're gonna talk about the week leading into the epic day that was yesterday. And it was a fucking pretty mixed week up until the the whole uh, Activision Bungie news. We had Nobi Labs launched on Tuesday Australian time. Uh to let's call it mixed Wednesday reception. Was it Wednesday? Or was it Tuesday? Was it recess? Yeah, true. Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning. Yeah. Um, it's been a big well, week. I would say mixed reception. Dev. I mean, like when I got up, I hadn't seen anything, and I started streaming, and I was like, "Cool!" Like, no, it'd be loud. Well, and, and, and my chat was like, "Don't bother." I'm like, "Why?" And I was just like, "Dado's still going. It's been seven hours, or whatever." I was like. Oh, it's one of those. It's one of those events. Okay, we'll go see Marisov instead. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> the um. So I I uh, I finished streaming early that last the like on that Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Um, and uh, I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'm not even going to give it a go. I'll check into that next morning. Um, woke up in the morning, went to the gym, came home, and I was just like, all right, Ninji's online. How long have you been at this? Since reset. Jeez. <laughs> and they were stuck at level six for the be- best part of like 15 odd hours or something like yeah. that. Then Ninji got level six and they've been stuck on level seven up until about half an hour until uh, before the uh, the podcast started today. Mm. So um, Noby Labs has now officially been solved. Yep. Yeah. Noby glad, Labs have been, glad got it. been officially Glad and his crew got happen? it. But does that mean we can go and get the ghost? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, we just got to figure out. Just read the instructions now. That's yeah. how. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, go on to Reddit and just be like, how to do Niobe Labs? Go here, do this. Oh, okay. Okay. Like it's, 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 yeah. Now that the smart people, now the smart people have done it, now the dickheads can go in and do it. So if you're yeah. practicing so, uh, Destiny content abstinence, you're uh, now well within your rights to go and jump into Bagusia Forge 
and get into it. Yeah. Look. Gucci uh, Gucci. What did you What did you think, Log, about this whole event? Because it's almost, you know what's funny? Like, the Activision announcement, like, it's almost, it feels like it, it was months it feels ago like it, now. Yeah, that, dude. And I was in it. Labs. It's not even, people aren't even talking about it. I think, I think look, mm. the, the thing that I took out of it, and this is going to be even more important in the light of what happened yesterday with the Bungie Activision thing, is that we, this, this is something different. It's something that we hadn't seen. And it was a, uh, like, a sort of, a method of delivering content that we hadn't really experienced before. Where there was this community event and a bottleneck placed that, you know, it was sort of like trying to bring everyone together to complete this thing. And then once it was out of the way, we're all, you know, everyone floods into the thing, whether you did it or not and happy days. Now, I mean, it's, it's dog's balls obvious that it was not meant to take this long. It was not meant to be this difficult. Exactly. And, that exactly. it was, you know, they probably thought anything. it would have taken three hours or four hours or something like that. What was wrong with the concept of it? Yeah. What was wrong was how long it went for before people solving it. And now this is going to seem harsh, but I think this illustrates oh the God. value of testers. This 100% is why you need non biased testers who test events before they go live. Now, I don't know what vv had or whatever had but put it this way right if millions of people couldn't solve it you're telling me that this product went out and you have five testers or how many testers play testers who did this and they solved it from level one to level seven within what 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 they wanted as a reasonable time because they would have done that all right so like okay testers you know nothing here's no ob labs go solve it okay like oh yeah we solved everything in five hours okay great that's fine we're not going to change anything now, I, I don't know, but I would have to say that there's, there was lunch talk or there was something that happened because some of the things to solve the puzzles were so niche that yeah. that's why it took so long. And that should have been picked up by testers who have no background, right? And I, I just feel like, you know, they, they would have well, had clues. I mean, they, would, they would have been talking to devs or they would have been having lunch or like they, they got that tiny snippet of like, or just shoot like just it's simple or or it's not a word spelling or that little clue that gave you the answer and uh that's my per- i don't know if that's the case or not but i think the overarching thing is the amount of time should have been picked up in testing yeah that's look i think well, that's fair this, i think it is fair the thing is that we you you I, I can't remember did we speak about this last week or not or did we speak about it off stream but there are um, they can't test for every single thing. Yeah, I think that there's been kind of. They, I they, mean, yeah. they, I I understand where you're coming from, Matt. Yeah, you get I, what I'm saying, like. But you, no, I I 100 I do. Like they, it, it, maybe they should have put a little bit more into testing, but they can't test for every single thing. Like the whole reason why this didn't have, like they weren't able to get it, is because a string was missing from the um from the hint in game. <laughs> Well, that, that's what I mean, right? Yeah, that, yeah, that's right. what I'm saying. Is but, like, 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 that should have they, been they feedback. Like a tester would have gone, guys, you, you, there's a there's, there's a bit that's missing that connects because everyone got up to basically solving those gems and they spelt the word but didn't know what to do with it. So everybody had the word forest, but they didn't know the input method. And yeah. that's what you're saying. There was, there was, there was a clue missing. Yeah, mm. I think that, and I feel uh, like that would have been picked up. Just, think- just before, just before we go down this rabbit hole, because uh, again, we can go on a tangent here. I want to say that Jugs actually brought it up in chat, so thanks, mate. Um, but uh, glad, glad on Twitch. Um, he was the dude who cleared it first. But uh, tweet eight minutes ago at Bungie. I do not want any credit for World's First or anything like that. I think a congratulations to the in- entire community is warranted. Yeah, my, my team and I basically didn't sleep for days, but neither did thousands of others. Some just don't have the luxury of a team and a chat. Yeah. yeah. So nice. big boy. Good job. I like congratulations to him. Congratulations yeah. to Dado and Ninji and all that sort of thing. But it, it doesn't matter who was confirmed first. It was a community effort, and I think that goes to show on how much that man and his fire team and Ninji and his fire team and, the, and Dado and his fire team 
fucking care about the, mm. the that it was a community effort rather than a personal effort. I think, for like, lack of a better term, my takeaway out of it is, you know, and we can we can obviously the the it didn't go over the way it was intended to go over. Long long story no. short, um, I didn't when I was tweeting about it on Wednesday anticipate that it'd be fucking Saturday by the time anyone fixed it, and I honestly believe that I would have woken up Thursday morning and it had been done. So it's a completely different, you know, like we haven't probably seen a piece of content go this awry in in terms of destiny. But the thing no. that I have taken out of it is that this event. For, for that day where there was something behind this wall and no one had solved it, it was fucking cool, man. So if they can do something like this, that's a, Dude, that's a serious high-level puzzle that, yeah, that it doesn't form that bottleneck thing, and I think that was a lot of people's issue with it. And you know what? Like, that's fair enough. There are parts of, you know, like I'll get to this in a second, get to the, the sort of expansion of that point in a second. But, you know, like... There are parts of this that I think are great and I hope to see again. I hope we see these mm, kind of high-level yeah, complicated 100%. puzzles. Fuck it. You know what? Make it even harder but make it so that there's something unique and cool hidden behind it but that it's not particularly bottlenecking content. I think I think that's what we've learned out of it. The well, other thing I mean, that, like, Sorry, man. Go. The, the only reason it was bottlenecked was like Sloth said, there was, and, and Jugs said in chat, it was that... There seemed to be a missing part. There seemed to be yeah. a missing part that that was solvable by players. And so what it came down to was trial and error. And, you know, if you listen to, like, some of the streams, people were like, this just feels like such trial and error. Like, we know the direction we're going in. We know we've got yeah. this bit of clue, but we don't know how to import it. And, you know, chat was saying, like, checkpoints. I think checkpoints may have solved that issue because then – it allows you to do trial and error quicker. One of the big issues was it was taking so long to get yeah. to the input stage that you could only input one or two options each time or three options. So it was taking well, 15 minutes hang, to get hang, there hang and then that really blew hang. out the time. Yeah, hang on a second though because maybe what, what, if, what if it didn't take this long? So what if they implemented the checkpoint system but what if it didn't take this long? Then it wouldn't so feel as... Uh, as amazing as a uh, yeah, you're, as you're right. Effort. It's such a, yeah, such well, a balancing act because if, if the event what, itself only took an three hour? hours, yeah, people yeah. be pissed. They'd be like, "What was this content? It was you biped it up, and it was like a fucking hour." And <laughs> and I think and I think that's <laughs> always I think that's always in the back of the mind of the of the developers is like, I don't want the co we know the community is ravenous with this kind of stuff, and they you know however much we test it half the time because they'll solve it quicker because they've got millions of people like you can't mimic the hive mind of millions you can't mimic the hive mind well, of it's, like it's not the a destiny it's, but, community and and that right there is where i'm going to agree to disagree there matt because it's not a hive mind i sat in ninji's chat i sat in Pato's chat, i sat in Pato's chat <laughs> The fucking the amount of theories. Now there was another. There was a tweet that oh, you did tweet out it beforehand. Was, it was not. It was uh, not coordinated. It wasn't a it's coordinated right. hive mind. It was a ringing, screaming. Yeah, it was a ringing, <laughs> screaming. No, this is my idea. No, this is my idea. And no, like you have to try my idea. No, glad. No ninja. No dado. No. Uh, James work. No GSXR Clyde. Like try my idea. My idea is definitely going to work. Like we were stuck, like we as the community, but like the guys who were at the forefront of this stuck on level six for the better part of about 10 hours. Yeah. Anyway, and like, there's, there's no right. hive mind. Hey, Everyone's um, so hey, Tom, <laughs> Tom what's <laughs> we, your we did it. We did. <laughs> We've done it. Tell us, what did you think? Uh, Good one. Yeah. <laughs> Stop putting me on the spot, Matt. That's um, fine. <laughs> Just yell at him. That's what we I do. was look. I uh I woke up Wednesday morning and I was like, cool, it's all happening. Um, uh, maybe tonight we'll have a new Forge to play. And uh, you know, it went the way it did. Um, I think it's a little bit like we've had challenges like this before, more in D1 than D2, where it's like been quite the slog before we actually get to what 
the goal is, but usually it's been for something like a weapon as opposed to a, an activity. And it's been frustrating because uh, I don't want to say that Bungie gave in, although they, I guess, kind of did. They changed tack um, and were like, all right, don't worry about it. Here's the Forge as well as Niobe Labs, so you can do them at the same time. It's okay. You don't have to do Niobe Labs. You don't have to wait for that. But at the same time, it's like, yeah. Like, he's one, just getting another thing to throw balls at, so... Yeah, one thing that yeah. I will say is that a lot of the community and log, log and and a lot of other lot of other friends of mine actually uh, like I, I tweeted out saying I could re write a reply to this, but my friends have already written a reply to it and like uh, to combat all of the fucking ring and the incomprehensible screeching and this that and the other and all of the negativity and all that sort of thing. Uh, one thing that people fail to forget in this community is that Destiny is made up of trillions of lines of code. It would have taken a long uh, fucking time to find any sort of issue with this, and it did take a long fucking time for a... I don't know how many coders that they've got in that company, but probably quite a few, and they would have had to go through each individual line of code that is related to Niobe Labs to see if there was an issue. So a lot of those people that... Um, went off the handle and, and said, oh, I just want to play Barusha Forge or Felucia Forge. I just want to, just just let me in, just solve it already. Just Bungie, just give us a hint. Just just shut the fuck up. <laughs> nah, look, the, the thing that, the, and, and I, was, I, I sat, I, I spent way too much fucking time on Twitter on Wednesday and anyone who follows oh, me would probably be get, like, look at this get. asshole. Just, you know, like I was completely, I went, nah, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to talk to people. I'm going to, I'm going to try and find out what people's issue with this is and I'm going to try and fucking, you know, do my bit to either help them see that it's not all fucking doom and gloom or whatever. And, yeah, I ended up in some fucking fights, which is fine. <laughs> I'm a big boy. I can handle it. But the thing that the thing that I think that we forget as a community is that we consistently demand to be entertained by destiny, right? We were like, I want this. I want things to do. I want new experiences. I want fucking new gear. I want this. I want that. All of this sort of shit. Now, that in and of itself requires innovation. And innovation isn't perfect. Go and ask Elon Musk about his stupid fucking submarine that he was going to rescue the kids with in Thailand that wouldn't have worked at all. Sometimes you just miss. And that is part of it. And it is going to yeah. happen. And especially going forward where Bungie are going to be walking their own path, they don't have, they're not going to have the limitless fucking resources of Activision behind them. If we're seriously expecting them to be able to, to use Luke Smith's words, surprise and delight, which is the intent of this whole thing, that's, that's what they want to, that's the reaction they want to get out of you, to surprise you, catch you off guard and, you know, give you something that you find pleasant. They're going to have to take risks and this is what happens when those risks don't land perfectly. Yeah. And you know what? Like I think I've got so much respect for the raid team because think about this. The raid team, they have those puzzles for every oh, encounter. Yeah, <laughs> All right. And, and, you know, they're executed pretty much perfectly. Like, you know, it t might take 20 hours to do Last Wish, but then it comes down. Like, it, once you've solved it, like, maybe the vault was was maybe the exception to that, which was, once again, that was almost like there's a clue missing here of how we solve this. Oh, I mean, that even less so than what we got with No OB Lab. So, like, that's the first thing. I think um, hopefully there will be – I don't know who made uh, No OB Labs if that was through – I assume, I assume that was through VV, right? But, like – Maybe there's needs to be more collaboration between raid team and um, puzzle making team <coughs> for team DLC. Puzzle team. Like, look at the thing that they touched on in the twab, like the fucking guitar era that's been there since day goddamn dot. Yeah, you know, I mean like that shit just can't be fixed. And uh, people who don't understand coding and all that sort of thing, they go straight off the bat and they blame or Luke Smith or anything like that. Just no, I'm not. I'm not talking about code. Reel it back. I, I'm. I'm talking about design. I'm talking about designing puzzles for DLC because this was the first sort of test of like a pretty hardcore puzzle in a DLC, right? A raid type puzzle in a DLC. So, um, I'm. I'm talking about that, and I think. Um, I hope there's a there's a battle plan in place now, right? That there is 
okay guys if, when we do another dlc and we release this kind of puzzle like thing what is our plan and let's stick to it okay like do we just let them go until it's done or do we have a, a clue that's released after five hours and everybody gets the clue it goes on twitter yeah. it goes on the floor and everyone gets the same clue because if we and this we've been i've been saying this shit for so long now you're going to do world's first stuff you need to have an even playing field and you need to have a battle plan for this kind of thing so all right five hours if no one's done it boom you get the first clue and they've already got all the clues ready so it's not like they're being influenced by what they're seeing on twitch and they're being influenced by what other things they're seeing all right so the, this clue is um it, the first clue for the Navi level six is it's not to do with the letters you don't shoot letters okay great now we know we need to shoot symbols they that's might have a, got it off. That's a fucking right? fair point. And when you think about it from a like the alternate perspective too of like even for like as a business for social media engagement, that'd be massive. Like, so, you know, I, I think win -win. I hope, hopefully like, they've learned from that and they've got, okay, these are the things. We want to keep doing hardcore puzzles. Let's communicate what our plan will be. Let's set some standards for these puzzles. We're going to let you play around with it for our intended amount of time that we think it should be run for and if it runs over that we'll release a clue on the hour every hour on bungie.net and on on twitter and we'll go from there or whatever right? oh Good approach. Just, i mean it, it, that's a great that is a great approach but i'm just i can see it now that there are, there would be people out there that uh there are people out there that would fly off the handle and say, oh, you're only hinting because streamers are asking you to. Yeah. Oh, look, well, I, you know I, what? Like, look, know, look, I, look, no, look. No, no, no. <laughs> Matt, finish what you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, like I, 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 I see what Jugs is saying, and I do think there's a side to that, that people will say, you know, and I'm this kind of person. I'm like, no. Have, have you guys done escape rooms? Yes. This yes. is a good test. And you get hints in escape rooms, and yeah. there are people when you do escape rooms like I don't want a fucking hint. I will die in here before I get a hint. And there are other people like I want to enjoy the content. Can we just get a fucking hint so we can move on to the next room? Mm. And you get that. You're gonna get that in the gaming community too, right? And people will be very upset with getting hints. But the point I'm making is have the standard and stick to it. Okay, so like yeah. they obviously had to unlock maybe it's just that maybe it's like this content is meant to go for 10 hours or or we think that you've suffered enough for 10 hours <laughs> so we're going to unlock the next forge after 10 but you can still go well, back and consult no obi labs you know i just this, think some of that upfront would be helpful were people even that, that mad about all this yeah Yo, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I live and on a different it, planet. Um, it devolved. Why were they so mad about it though it devolved like, into, there was a few no, there was a few nobody different nobody could things. get the new forge until no, yeah. Obi Labs unlocked. It's okay. And it was 24 hours. Well, yeah, welcome, but... welcome to Australia, mate. Look. That's what we think as well. But <laughs> <laughs> calm down, you what? All right, here we, go. Here we go. Relaxing. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here's Log's fucking bullet points on the whole thing. Guess what? You're paying for an annual pass. Bro, it's one day of it. Play the music. Play the music. Oh, <laughs> the I, music. But I did, go, this, go, I did go, this for you. I queued it up for you. Play and the goddamn music. Oh, fuck. All right, so long story short, Sloth's prone to a rant. And I, I queued up some backing tracks for Sloth to have it. Like I was just going to sneak them in while he was ranting and, you know, build a bit of atmosphere and, you know, <laughs> casually take the piss out of him. So now we've fucking ruined it because I'm going to do it. But anyway, here we go. We're going we're gonna to play some fucking angry music underneath me. Right. Here we go. <laughs> it's throwing me off. The thing that fucking really got, got me about this is that there was a whole, like, when, when this community sometimes is challenged, it splits itself in part. It, it, it was garbage. It was the second that um, people started attacking streamers because, oh, this content is a bottleneck designed to make me watch streams and it's prohibiting me from hitting my own content and I paid $30 for this annual pass and I want the content right now and it's not good enough that I can't. That's not the way this works. This is destiny. This isn't fucking, you know, Pokemon or any <laughs> other fucking shit. This is destiny. The equivalent of you going, I want to be able to go in and instantly do every bit of content this game has is fucking stupid. And I'll tell you why. Look at destiny like it's a fucking gym. 
Destiny is the gym of gaming. You don't walk into a gym and say, I paid my membership, I want to lift 300 kilos today. That's the end game content. I'm just turned up, I've never lifted a weight in my life, but I want to fucking experience the absolute gamut of what this gym has to offer. Guess what'll happen? You'll fucking die. That's what'll happen. So approach Destiny the same way. Look at it like this. This is what it is. Start at the ground level. Guess what? There's fucking content there to go and do it. And do it until you can do the rest of the shit after it. That is it. Oh my god, that was that brilliant. Worked. I love that music. I love yeah. that music. That was perfect. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway. That was. I feel. I feel weird about that now because I've been like waiting for sloth to fly off the handle for so long to be able to do that. <laughs> oh, oh, all right, look. Okay. So let's get to done, it. Any, any done, final, thoughts, final thoughts on Niobe Labs. I think that was a pretty good. All right. So Niobe Labs. Now this is something on. that I actually said to you two, uh, Matt and Log, um, in in um, Cunts Incorporated. Uh, but uh, that's <laughs> my one. That's my one. We're we're tra- we're changing the allowance. You've been naughty. It's going down um, to zero. We're, but we're... Uh, this, this is this is this is the this is the thing. I don't have. I I I I, I may have a rant. I don't know. They tend to come on a little bit quite uh, a little bit uh, off the cuff. <laughs> um, but uh, no, this is the thing that really crossed my mind when it takes twenty four hours or however many days. Shit! What was it? Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday, you fucking cock holster. Um, uh, it, it, it was Tuesday. Um, it was it was Tuesday that it came out, and it was Glad stream for twenty five hours, Ninja stream for twenty odd hours, Dado stream for. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sloth, can you be more uplifting to fit the theme? (laughs) (laughs) You are such a cop. (laughs) Go ahead, take it off, take it off. Do we want to talk about bungee activism now or what? (laughs) Now, in regards regards to however long it takes. <laughs> and I'll leave this, I'll leave this uh, in the, in the community and I'll leave this on YouTube and you guys can sort of think about it and reply as you wish is that does Bungie have a duty of care for people no. who play? Do, 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 does Bungie have a duty of care for people who play and do these con do they content releases for no. hours upon hours upon hours no. upon hours, 24 hour O2 and all that sort of thing. Now, the reason why I say this, Tom, the reason why I say this is because the WHO, and I don't agree with the WHO, but the WHO last year or the year World before Health Organization. The World Health Organization um has said that uh, excessive gaming is a mental health disorder. You know do what? You know, oh, look, I'll, I'll throw this do out there. Have, do, does no, does no, no. Bungie have a duty of care? I I I don't know. I I don't know. This is I me coming. Think, this is me coming at it from a a military background type of situation where we have to look after our soldiers' well being. There's look, no if buts or maybes about uh, it. On, on a surface level, there there is aspects that they do, especially when it comes to gambling and addictive behavior. One hundred percent and. We so when I went to the summit, we 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 sort of talked about the release of Destiny Two and how it was became so casual, and the responses from the developers was that was around this topic was that we saw people playing a fucking lot of Destiny, and you know there was an aspect of casualifying it that you could jump in and you could get it done in less time, and there was an aspect of that in the, mm. the decision making that we don't want to ruin your life over a game. Um, the, when it the, comes the to other... puzzles and that, like I, I, I disagree. I think there's, there's a distinction between like reward mechanisms that are, that are devious and a borderline gambling and addictive. Uh, mm. And that's in every game though. That's, I mean, if you're a real, if you do a lot of gaming, you you'd likely have some addictive personalities, especially with loot and shoots. Like, yeah, 
Mm. That's why we're fucking here because we're like <laughs> being I mean, if, 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 you, if, you, if you'd <laughs> seen me on the blast furnace grind, you would know that that is one hundred percent correct. So, so <laughs> like, as people, as as uh, at least three of us, I can't speak for Tom, but at least three of us, um, we all suffer from some form of mental health. Oh my well, god! We have at I some point have. in, in yeah. the future that I we, we suffer, that, yeah. we have suffered from some sort of mental health, and. Uh, the reason why I say what I say is because some people can't, they, in their brain, they can't switch it off. They can't say, okay, that's enough destiny. That's enough gaming for this yeah. time. They're usually that's the, the reason su- why they're usually I say the, su- the successful streamers <laughs> because yeah, they just look. keep on going. Like, <laughs> so, when, so when, people streaming, when, when, when people are streaming, when people are streaming for 24, 30, 40 hours, uh, or 24 hours and then taking 16 hour break and then another 24 hours as glad and and ninji and a few other people have done this week like where's the line uh, well, i look- personally don't have the stamina to play destiny without streaming for more than two hours and like I, I have to take breaks every hour. i have to get up i can't like my brain just melts i don't know how yeah. streamers do what they do yeah and i don't know why they necessarily choose to do it in such long blocks there's um, a little voice in the back of your head. There's a little voice in the back of your head that says, "If you don't get this done, I totally understand this, this that." Is, this is this is this is me. This is me personally. If you don't get this done, or if you don't stream, you'll you'll be a failure for your whole life. And th- this is extreme, I know, but like this is the like my voice says some things differently to what say Matt's voice does, or what Log's voice does, or what your voice does, Tom. Crazy. But like they they say. Um, Adam, if you don't stream tonight, you may feel like shit and all that sort of thing. But if you don't stream tonight, yeah, yeah. you are going to uh, lose your entire community. Yeah, yeah. No one's going <laughs> to yeah. The, the apocalypse is coming. Yeah, yeah, the apocalypse is coming. And it's the worst thing. It's yeah, the yeah. worst oh, thing. Oh, dude. And that's, and that's, that's pervasive. You know, it's pervasive. Yeah. And it's also part of content creatorship too. Like yeah. I, yeah, get exactly. that, I get that like, about like, guess thing. what, Log? You haven't put out a song in a month. That's bad, and it's going to be bad yeah. until you do it, and it's going to take yeah. you so much yeah. time. And I know that Matt goes through the same thing too. That like we were talking about it over Christmas. The thing that look this this is a really contentious issue. And do I do I believe that Bungie or you know any game developer in this context have a duty of care to sort of make sure things are happening in a time frame that you know suits human biology and allows people to have a break and all that sort of thing? I don't think that irrespective they can be in control of people people will do what they do do i think no, this is a very it, atypical example and it went very askew in terms of how long it took and that led to like subsequent people doing these really long streams yeah. uh look that's 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 part of it too but at the end of the day when especially you're looking at streamers and i don't mean this to sound really cynical but you got to remember at the same time while it's the um you know that this puzzle but this puzzle is really good for for what they do like someone like glad he would have done really great numbers and you know picked up subs and there's a there's a business aspect to it as well so while destiny is driving this to some extent and i want worlds first there's also that other subtext that like i mean is there anyone that didn't stream that sat there for fucking did did these massive stints exactly i doubt it so it's probably more based in the business than it is in destiny itself I, I was yeah, I was I trying to too. liken it more to the world's first of Last Wish that took um, that took twenty four hour twenty four hours and uh, like and and all that sort of thing like that uh, like the, the because there are, are physical rewards there are physical rewards and there's that ment- mentality of I got world's first motherfuckers I am the best at this. I'm the best at this content. Yeah, and it's the I'd, same thing that happened in the World of Warcraft well, community as well. But that's 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 what I'm saying. Like I'll tell it's, you, I'll tell is you this, it the developers right? is it the developers that have a duty of care? Is it us as casters, as content creators yeah, that have to I, go? Well, if we're gonna set a fucking good example for people, maybe we need to fucking do it. That that's the yeah. reason why I well, brought the, it up. The, I'm not I'm not saying Destiny and Bungie, I'm not saying that Bungie or any other game dev or publisher have a duty of care. It was like more asking the question. Like I yeah, think it's fine. I, I think but... it, I got I got two things on that, right? Firstly, people who are on Twitch and the business side of stuff, this this is my workplace, right? You guys are got a camera directly into my workplace. 
and part same. of having a, a workplace is to have a safe workplace. That is 100% on people on Twitch. If Put it this way. If you are employing someone to stream Destiny, there's no way you could get away with fucking having them stream yeah. 20 hours without a break, okay? And if something happened to them and you employed them to do that, you would be fucking in big trouble, okay? Mm. So 100% in my mind is on the casters and, and people who are playing the, and gamers, but... The, the 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 thing for this is and and even though it sounded ridiculous lot when you said it at first i, I want to put this scenario in your mind imagine imagine if someone had some serious health concerns on stream after doing and we've had pe- people in other people have, have fucking died, died. people have died stream. that's yeah now imagine what the media would do and i think they would ask the exact same question that you said sloth and they would probably attack bungie for it if if a streamer that, and that, died, and that's, that's the that's the other thing that I'm afraid like of this. is that sensationalized media, sensationalized media uh, will fly off the handle and they'll attack the 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 platform. So your Twitch, your Mixer, your YouTube, your Facebook gaming, they will attack the developers, they will attack the publishers. Anyway, um, this is like a, anyway, another topic, though. Dude, I mean, you, you know so what? You know what? Talking, uh, somehow we got to fucking. You know what? <laughs> we'll, let's let's fucking in the incoming weeks. We'll reach out to Ninja. We'll try and get him on. He can. He, he has a different perspective to do this to us. You know, he's done yeah, the yeah, world's yeah. first stuff. But you know, we're not at the coal face of that sort of shit. And I'm sure that there's a psychological no. difference between someone with the fucking absolute dedication that they have compared to us. So look, we'll we'll circle yes. back to that at a future date. Let's get into. Oh, hold on, hold on. One second. We didn't actually cover the Bagusa Forge. Let me just quickly. It's just, it's just another that. forge. <laughs> no, it's, it's, sto- one, it's just another forge. Yeah, no right. story. We defeat um, Civics, right? This is the conclusion. This do is we? the conclusion of BA, yeah. Of Black Armory. When do we defeat him? In Niobe Labs. Did we? I didn't. Yes. No, no. no. Okay. In the new forge, right? No, in no. Niobe Labs. He's a, there's a spider tank in the forge. Okay, well, I actually haven't played the new forge, so. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Jugzilla's. I've got Jugzilla's. Jugs, that's what you told me, you fool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's just stitched you up. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right, Matt. I've heard people say the law will find you. I'm just... <laughs> oh, it's, but is that is that not in that... The Izanagi quest, is that not in the forge? Isn't that in the Bugazi mm, forge? Mm, I think it's it's in that slide. I saw a forge thing. Anyway. Okay, okay. Let's come back to it next it, week. Civics, Heck. Civics Heck. is not part of the Bugazia <laughs> forge, but is in uh, the forge area. Why can't they just have made a raid with Civics at the end? So you kill him. Well, we 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 and had a raid that Civic controlling the servitor that was controlling the mech warrior that was trying to kill us. Okay. So, I'm so simple though. Make it. You make can, it. You, <laughs> we're all simple, man. You can. Right, so you kill Civics. Uh, whatever. That's that's the end of Black Army, right? He's like yeah, a sort of villain, but it's a little bit like Rise of Iron. It's not really about a villain. Like Rise of Iron was about Iron Lords and. And this was really about Ada and the Tom's got a question. Yes, Tom. Well, Master <laughs> Mylan, um, how does civics fall into like the grand picture of things, like with Savathun and? Uh, I know. And there's, stuff. There's, there's, he's there's completely no, he's just like he's, he's, just he's there on his own. He, he's a parallel parallel storyline, really. Like he's what sorry. we call a rogue dickhead. Oh, all right, <laughs> like the three he, of us, really. Yeah, pretty much. He just started a started a syndicate basically and started stealing technology. Started to, so it's yeah, not a house. It's not a house, it's a syndicate. Yes, yeah, it's, it's described as a syndicate, yeah. So because... what, did he sit down at a business table and just go, Hey, Mr. Dreg, Mr. <laughs> Servant, Mr. Shank, and yeah. just go well, and just go, uh we have the money to start our own syndicate. Yeah, so let's because go because stuff. he is the brother of of the spider, right? So it has that same sort of theme of underground crime. That's what they're going for. You know what we should do? We should kill the spider. <laughs> Look, you anyway, know I, I got one. <laughs> I'm ending this shit. We're talking about Bungie and Activision. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. I'm fucking putting on. That is it. 
<laughs> Civics, watch, watch good my, on you, mate. We'll come back to you. This is fucking hell. Video. Come on, it's okay. an hour in. That guy, okay, you know, that okay. guy that comes and's like actual podcast starts it. It's at an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go there when I upload this and I'm going to fucking write it myself so no one else can. <laughs> so, yesterday, Bungie announced <laughs> that they will be taking complete rights ownership of the Destiny franchise away from Activision and we'll be self-publishing the game that we've all thrown years of our life into at this point and it made everyone happy, the end. <laughs> well, if you're still no. playing at home and the very first question we asked i just had a quick look nearly seven percent stock market drop for activision and then up to nine. 12 percent uh by the friday wow. morning wow wow that's big Becky. that's i mean and that that's kind of that kind of um reeks of a a business decision at the top that isn't um it, that isn't from uh, based in in money look well, um okay because activision like the, the 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 big head the big tops of activision like it's a publisher and all they want to do is make money like we are the 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 sheet that they test this shit on the the people their real customers are their shareholders, the shareholders and their yeah. stock, the um yeah, that's interesting know. that that's it really is. interesting they lost 12 so, percent why, why don't we it's a day i reckon we structure this do you want to talk about Positives let's, first, and then and then like risks, well, concerns, or let's I, let's, I let's do it I'll, this way. Let's do it this way. Let's talk about what it means for Destiny as a game first, okay. because to be honest, business is less cool than Destiny. Okay. <laughs> so we'll do that first, and okay. then once we've sort of you know look because we don't know what it means. None of us really fucking know what it means. There's probably people that. You know, even Bungie don't really know what it means yet. They're still coming. They're, they're still going to have to find their feet with it as well. So really, okay. I think we start with what it means for the game, what it, what it means for the community, and then we can fucking spin our shit on what, what we think it happened to begin with at the end. Um, <laughs> okay. So one thing one thing uh, before I start, before we get into it, is, yes, Log, I'm going off on a tangent again. Go fuck yourself. Um, is uh, everyone was really, really happy about it. Everyone was really happy about it. Uh, uh, people were reporting that they came out and they were popping champagne and cheering and all that sort of thing. But think of, um, there was a, a, a tweet from, I think it was, her name was Alex Frost, who was the Activision Bungie um, social media oh. manager. Mm. Yeah, and her job's um, kind of like... And her job's gone. Yeah. It's gone. Like, like Bungie is free. And that's amazing, but people have also lost yeah. their jobs in this. Well, like, I mean, they, th th this is what I'd put under the category of like concerns and like mm. uh, implications. And I guess we we can chat about that too. Was that you know one of the other things that I saw along those same lines is for people outside the US, they were really only reached by. Activision. Uh, contractors of Activision or Activision mm. themselves. So for yeah. Australia, we didn't even have an Activision office here. So this is the biggest publisher in the world. And they're like, well, you're not really big enough to have an office, essentially. We're going to contract to a me uh, social media company, essentially, um, to manage on behalf of us on uh, to sell Destiny. So, you know, all and, our interactions was with another company. So that, obviously, they're not going to have, well, they probably still have the client Activision, but won't be for Destiny. So yeah. well, I mean, Activision, exactly but they right. won't so have... when we we were we were talking about this the other day like uh, this will probably like we've had our one at one and done press junket uh, <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know if we'll get any more. Yeah, you know, that was, that was, that was, we went down to Sydney and played gambit with uh, with some fantastic people and all that sort of thing um that's probably not going to happen again no, because Australia so. I, Australia's I so. yeah, yeah it's 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 and look, you look at Anubis, same. Anubis, and Get Wrecked, and all that stuff that goes on in the UK, mm. and they have, mm -hmm. you know, not to the same extent yeah, that Australia does. Bungie's they have got an office there now, right? Didn't they build an office in the UK? You know what? This, I'm this is sure this Bungie is a case did. in point example of the things that Bungie as a business are, are going to need to learn. This is this is the the step into becoming a self publisher, and what yeah. that means and what it's going to look like in a year's time, we don't know. 
Like it's it's going to mm. be different. And at the end well, of the day, we're going to do what we do and we're going to be here doing what we do anyway. So, you know, not that much changes for us in terms of the ground level. But I do hope that there aren't important things like the charity events and things that people put on that Activision have been really good in supporting and, you know, they've put up prizes, all that sort of shit. I hope that that doesn't slide by the wayside. And knowing that Bungie and the way that they're wired, they're, they've got a pretty strong charitable ethos anyway <laughs> and they will know. I'd like to think that they will know that they're going to have to step up into to the plate and yeah, manage so, these yeah, things. I, I, I'm more uh, concerned that they, they obviously we know that they have the morality to do it, but the big question is now can they ability. afford to do it? Yeah, true. So and, there, there is uh, – sorry, Matt, go on. Well, look, to sort of come back to what <laughs> Log wanted to start this conversation, like what does this mean for Destiny 2, right? And I, I my first thought for starting this conversation is – Mm. is answering the question, why is everyone happy? If you can put that in a sentence, and for me, the sentence goes something like this. Why is everyone happy that Activision is leaving? Um, the sentence goes that the community predicts Bungie has greater morals and ethics than the corporate giant Activision and will make decisions um, that will benefit gamers in Destiny 2, yeah. not necessarily invested. That to me is the overarching sort of celebration is that profit, uh, like um, decisions won't be made in game to solely benefit investors. The gamer will be considered. That, that that's to me it. is sort of summarizing the-, the that, that is a fair, that's a fair summarization of it. Um, very articulate, the, Matt. <laughs> yeah, very. Um, the, the... I've been thinking about about three days. <laughs> It only happened a day um, ago. He does work for Activision. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> He's let the cat out the bag. Um, anyway. Now, the, 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 the other thing that um, will, Bun will Bungie make the best Destiny that they can? Yes. Now, uh, reference a video that my a, a friend of the cast and a friend of ours, um, Jason Opton, made yesterday is that it's good. It's good that Activision is leaving. Uh, that that the sorry, Activision is signing over the publishing rights to uh, for Destiny to Bungie. That's that's fantastic. That's really really cool. But the downside of it is is that we may have, and this what this was also brought up on Logstream last night um, by Etz, is that we may have more quality content, but the quantity is going to go down. Yeah significantly i think so um the other sorry tom is it though like no one well, really knows like, yeah sorry I, I, we we are guesstimating but we also uh the other thing that was that the more i think about it the more i may be correct but um uh et said last night we may have another borderlands 3 situation and we may have another john ramiro daikatana um situation where with no one pushing them to do, it may take a long time. I look, so, look, look, I'll look at it this way. And I don't think that we can sort of, we can sit here and hypothesize about this sort of stuff, but the timelines that we've currently lived to are probably going to change because they are something that I imagine Bungie has fucking struggled with, has well, led to compromises well, what, that in hindsight. is not changing, but everything yeah. beyond announced is obviously up in the air, I imagine. Yeah. So, Log, do you want to bring up the chat on the overlay, mate? Yeah, I will in a sec. There's compromises yeah. that they've made that I believe that they've made for the sake of time, and I don't think we will see that anymore. I, I think that if there is something that they're going to have to take another three, four, five months to do, they'll do that and then it'll be done properly. And they're going to be hanging their hat on destiny. Like, make no mistake, this is a you know, this is, this is, you know, it sounds like a risk for, for Activision to let it go, right? It sounds like, you know, they've taken a hit in share price. The big risk here is Bungie. It, it, like, oh, they yeah. make, make no fucking mistake. Their entire existence depends on the, Destiny now. It is. The, the concern yeah, is now it. is, right? And that is. Ease, and that is. Um, well, true. There's that, that, I mean, that's a side thing, but. As yeah. much as as much as um, Activision is villain, vilified, which they should be, because they make super scummy decisions. Only the heads of Activision, I yeah, will yeah. say, only yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. the upper management of Activision should yeah. be vilified. The yeah, people right. that work on the ground at Activision, yeah, exactly. 
they are like we met people in Sydney. Yeah, they're they're lovely. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, 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 right. So I, I'm talking about the 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 corporate giant, right? So that part of it um, should be vilified, but the the benefit to that is it gave a lot of smoke and mirrors to who was making certain decisions because mm. you could always pass the blame off to Activision, okay? Mm. And to be honest, there were gameplay things in Destiny 2 that had nothing really to do with Activision, right? Um, like just People blamed gen- Activision for them, though. Exactly, right? Mm. So now there's no Activision in the picture. Now, if the game is fucking shit, it is Bungie, and they are going to be very very aware of that and that is why they can take more time that is why they can not necessarily have to stick to a schedule that's why they can go look this is not up to par we need to push this back and we need to make this better because everything we put out now there is no like oh you know we we were forced to do this or you know we had to stick to our contract now it's like (laughs) the ball's in our court if if um if it's not good it's not good and it's it's on us and now the issue is i think with perception is none of these changes are going to happen the next year. Everything that's already planned is, is, is already under the contract with, you know, what they plan with Activision, right? So let's just say Joker's wild. I think people would still be thinking like, oh, it's, it's too soon. But let's say like Penumbra. If Penum- Penumbra's not good, everyone's be like, well, you don't have Activision, but why is this still shit? Which one's Penumbra? But- I love the one after um, the, number the last one. The it is the final the content. Of- season of the oh, okay. blank. Before September. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So if that's no good, guarantee people were like, well, we bungee your shit. But, you know, the, the likelihood is those effects haven't come into play yet. We're not yeah, going to see. I think anyone the close enough to until it. Until like yeah. a year plus. Yeah. Is I think anyone. On it is on the roadmap. Yes. Yeah. So, so they'll stick to that the because next- it's the annual pass. And that'll be sort of the end of this content model, I imagine. I think. Yeah. I mean, that, on, that's what. We, go, that's... go, Tom. Tom. Sorry. Shut hang up, on. Mom. Yeah. Shut up, Mom. I'm good. I, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Reengage. <laughs> <laughs> you broke me. I think, the, I think the other thing. I think like that. I mean, that's the way we've got oh. to be looking at it. it no, you go, Tom. Oh, give the signal. Uh, well, I think this really goes back to what you were saying. Um, <laughs> Uh, about testing um, with Niobe Labs is that when you have a big publisher behind you who's giving you all this money, but they're applying lots of time pressures to you and deadlines, and then you've got marketing things in the mix as well, um, then things obviously have to be ready by a certain point, and you can't continue to... Testing usually happens, I, at least I imagine, I don't, I don't work in a professional environment, but usually happens after it's actually been built. So, um, what well, needs to be playable? Stop. Yeah, well, yeah. it's like um, sort of in parallel, I guess. So, you Just... stop building at some point, then you do testing. Mm-hmm. And I imagine that testing is also one of those um, stages that often gets left by the I've forgotten what that expression is, but um, it's often underlooked Wayside and gets, them. yeah, that's it, Wayside. and doesn't get enough time, yeah. um, which does lead to like missing strings of text, which turn out to be critical hints. Um, yep. But like, I think if you go back to things like Curse of Osiris, where you do have Bungie, or for, for instance, any other developer really that's doing expansions, when you do set out to do a big expansion with all the cutscenes and all that sort of thing, you are, uh, it just feels like one of those situations where they had a grand plan and then as they were implementing it, um, they like just kind of ran out of time. So like, it was beautiful for what it is, but obviously left um, a lot to be desired. And I think uh, this, I, I do wonder if this uh, change of direction to, uh, can't think of the right r- word, but like less uh, uh, pre-rendered um, cutscenes by like blur and stuff and uh, yep. a greater focus on more of a sort of more, a larger, longer term live event, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, so a holiday event that goes for like three months, so a season. I think uh, an increased focus on that does allow for things like more testing um, and doesn't necessarily cost as less, as much, sorry. So, um, yeah, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I agree with that. And I, I think, think that's they're probably they can 
I think that was probably one of their last wins too um, against Activision before, you know, they did go bye-bye because like Activision probably would have been pushing for these big fully fledged expansions that they can actually be like, Hey, curse of Osiris, look at these great cutscenes, and it's all flashy and stuff. But then when you actually get into it, it's like all potatoes and not much meat. Um, um, so we 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 we, i was wrong sorry there before um you were you were correct tom um september is not on the roadmap it goes to august yeah uh it's not very far away yeah that's that's good okay so i'm probably less concerned with that because i think you know but mm, i still think i i think one of the things that i would like to say is um some people seem like everything's going to change instantly and it's yeah, not. It will not. Well, that's, yeah, that's like, the main point that I want to make about this, that. In, this entire thing may take, may take months. It, it may take year, until September, year, can September I, this year. Can I throw this out there to you guys? And we obviously invested in this probably way more than the average person given that we talk about it for an hour and a half every week. But if Bungie come out and say... Originally, Destiny 3 was slated to be released in 2020. It was going to be September 2020. And we go, we aren't going to do that anymore. We're going to, it'll be out when it's ready. We're going to make it as good as we can. Do you have, do you, you as a gamer, as a guardian, as a player of this franchise, are you with the would you go oh well that's fucked i have to wait another year maybe or do you go you know what go and do it which which way oh, do you i mean look, I, I, think, I would rather I think them anyone's that, disappointed, would, disappointed if something's delayed or I, I think that's just that's just normal but i definitely would be ha- happier with something to be delayed and be better than releasing something half baked I, yes. I would much rather I them take them take their time um, so what you were saying about Destiny 3 there, Log, um, an analyst uh, reported on God, by um, Game Rant, uh, Cowan and Company... Oops, lost out of fucking... Split. <laughs> Actually, Max makes a great deal of sense now that Bungie's in full control of Destiny. Now, I'm cherry-picking from that argument, um, but I can want you, them to... Can, can, you, can you tell us you the argument up. you broke up? What's this about, um, Max? All right, so Game Rant has reported on a, an analyst company um, in regards to Destiny 3. Cowan and Company's prediction that Destiny 3 will launch in 2020 after the Bungie Activision split actually makes a great deal of sense. Now that Bungie is in full control of Destiny, it has a chance for a second first impression by releasing a new game that is perhaps better in line with its own vision for the franchise. My my so my hopes is exactly that. That is, is that, it. Yeah, that's what everyone wants. That, that's why everyone's that, happy. Is that Bungie finds its identity, and because I feel like uh, Activision was probably, I mean them, them too, but there was a big push to you know to, to casualify it and to, to have as many people jump in as possible. I would love for it to find its identity, even if it's a niche looter shooter, and it's not your your massive game, you know, like that's okay. Like find what you are now. You don't have those barriers of someone else telling you what to do. And, and I think the, the irony of that is when you do find your identity, you build a bigger audience anyway, because people are like, Oh, we, we know what destiny is now. We know what yeah. it is as a game. We know mm. who it's for. And I feel like they've never really found that. And that's one of my hopes. The second hope is I hope destiny three is the last release. I hope that they just, for me, consoles are brought up to 60 frames. And yeah, well, I, I, I thought I would also be happy with D2 remaining as the last I just, release. I and just want to drop to it. <laughs> and like make it Destiny. Yes. Yeah, exactly. dude. I, I always <laughs> you, thought you, that. You want, I, you I want hated a that. World of Warcraft type situation. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I but want that. Too. I want that. You want, you want, want. Destiny, Destiny, yeah. and then DLC, 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 DLC. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, now, one thing, speaking of World of Warcraft, um, one thing <laughs> works for... <laughs> Slotty, man, Sorry, you did, it, did it again. What was um, the thing? Oh, my God. One one thing that um, throws some spanners in the works uh, for uh, Destiny is uh, the launcher for PC. No, it doesn't. Blizzard, uh, yeah, Blizzard, no, no, Blizzard's no, no, for the time being... For the time being... 
for the time being, Blizzard has said, um, uh, at least I'm going to put out a wild guess here, at least until August when everything has been transferred. That's when I'm um, uh, guesstimating when everything is going to be transferred from Activision to Bungie. Um, Destiny will be on Blizzard. Yeah. That's not an issue, um, Slothy. It's not an issue, man. Like, uh, the, like there's the politics there. That's fine. They'll for. either pay to have it hosted on Blizzard. It won't go to Steam. Where are they going to go? Yeah. You know what? They made the fucking vault of glass. I'm sure they can figure, figure out a fucking launcher. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> I don't mean to be dismissive, but... Um, it, it, no, like... no, no. I'm talking... No, no, no. The reason why I say... The reason why I'm saying it, Log, is because, yeah, they made all the raid stuff, but... What uh, it's just extra work if they have to code up a launcher that's, and all that. Sort that's of part of the self-publishing thing. Yeah. That's what we're coming back to. They're going to have to have their own promote like publicity people. They're going to have to think these things out. You know, like it's not like throwing it in an Xbox. But you know what? The other thing that's fucking that we haven't touched on yet is the fact that literally the second that that tweet came out, where Bungie the our Destiny thing, Phil Spencer, that's the head of Xbox, is <laughs> I really can't. How I'm really doing? looking forward to fucking working with one of my favorite independent developers on one of my favorite franchises, a bright future in store for destiny or something to that effect. There are, there will be people out there chomping at the bit. Guess what? It's a fucking windows launched game. I must have, <laughs> I must have missed that tweet. Yeah, I must have missed it's, that tweet. Yeah, Dude, it's crazy. To, there, just last um, point though. Um, there's a lot of backend stuff like with Battle.net as well. Like if it doesn't always live on Battle.net because it's got an association, PC players have an association with their battle tags. So it's like, True. what does Bungie do then? Like does Bungie like start True. authenticating people directly with Bungie servers? And that like, this is the only speculation I'll do, but that sounds like a great time to start talking about cross play and cross save. You know what I mean? Uh, so, uh, hang on. Well, Good, do it. No, I'm not going to um, play epic music and just say do cross save. Okay. That was what I was going to do, but um, I won't. <laughs> so the the last thing I just sort of missed saying before was that I would have said D2 the last thing and just make it like, you know, ongoing DLC. But I really do think that consoles need to get to 60 frames a second before the last release. And then, and that's why I think if you wait till D3. And if you're chain, you can't. Your consoles you, can't are up there. you can't do that. You don't. You don't think we're going to get Destiny with sixty frames a second? I console? don't think console users will get Destiny two at sixty frames per second, for the reason why is that they would have to change the engine. Oh, yeah. oh. I, I don't. I don't think what? that's what Matt's talking about. I think he's saying that there'll be a subsequent console generation released, yeah. and yeah. the next version of they Destiny still have to will... change the engine, mate. That's what I'm saying. Like they'd have to change the well, engine. Well, that's what I'm saying. Platforms. I, I, to Look, bring it up to 60 frames per second so you're saying on Xbox by, and PlayStation. by 2020, console players are still playing at 30 frames a second? No. Well, I mean, if you're... we can do it on PC, then why can't we do it on console? I mean, oh, well, I'm, I'm no, I'm know. no fucking, I'm no know. developer, but I'm, it, it's an, it, it's a entire, entire engine change as far as I'm aware. Now, I'm just thinking from me, the, from, from, from a gameplay point of view, I think, Are you talking about the next Destiny release? Yeah, that's what he's talking about. That's what he's talking about. About D3. I'll just go outside, shall I? Yeah, <laughs> You're right. Okay. Sorry, I'm talking about D3. And There's I, a lot I going on. Like it's been a big week. We're okay. We're all going to get um, together after the cast and just have a fucking digital <laughs> a virtual cuddle and be like, it's okay, boys. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying before cementing, like because I really do want to see that just to be a final release and then just focus on perfecting it. And I just think before you, you, you cap that end, before you say this is a last release and we're just going to have your big DLC, your big Taken Kings, your big Forsakens once a year, which essentially is a new game anyway. Like, I mean, look at Taken King and yeah. like, Forsaken. Like, we're going to have one too, big... Too fast? What's like, that? Is it once a year too fast? I mean... Like it's obviously as it a player, be. it's not too fast. But like, yeah. if you're developing it, uh, if you're trying to release a big expansion yeah, once are. a year. I don't know, like, anyway, but but like you know, you, your big expansion, however often your small expansions, but whatever the roadmap is going to be, I just feel before you you get there, I feel like consoles need to be, you know, be a bit higher in regards to their frames and 
and because oh, Destiny's I just like, such a beautiful looking game. It is a beautiful like, game, but you know what? The, the 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 console consoles are for people who a don't <laughs> want. To, no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm actually not going to be toxic here. Consoles oh, here are for people, it's the first time for everything. Consoles, cons, consoles are for people who don't want to go out and spend eight hundred, nine hundred thousand, twelve hundred dollars. Um, well, well, I mean, yeah, but like, yeah, they, but we're they getting want, we we got sixty they, frames. Maybe in other they games. don't. Yeah, but maybe that. Yes, they do. But they, again, it's a different engine. But um, they don't want to uh, purchase a gaming computer. They want to be able to have their Xbox in their front room or in their living room where their families are and all that sort of thing. That's like uh, trying to develop for a system trying trying to develop for a system that is subpar kick him no 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 no. i'm not i'm not saying i'm not saying anything about i totally agree with what saying what sloth's saying and i agree i think that there there is always going to be this fundamental difference between what people playing on pc expect and what people playing on a console expect but now we're in the territory where we're literally trying to fucking predict not only where destiny's going going but the next console generation as well (laughs) we're solving all the big questions here on the podcast is there any as energize said um can't simply just can't afford pcs that handle games. yeah you know what and that's that's, that's that is Thing. It's where I was two years consoles, ago. Consoles are for ease of use, ease of location, exactly. and that's low the cost. reason I have it. Like I don't have to worry about managing my games. I don't have to worry about my graphics card burning up into a crisp. Yeah, that's exactly like, right. I can they're, just turn it on to replace. Destiny. They're cheap no to worries. replace. They're, they're simple. The sim, the user interface is simple and all that sort of thing. That I, uh, is the reason why I think. Like in regards to the where the engine is at the moment for Destiny Two, is that that low to sixty FPS? No, I think no, I if think you're releasing a think... game in 2020, I think this standard will be sixty frames on console. Well, it, well I mean, I agree. It, fucking Imagine Microsoft, that. Microsoft, and and PlayStation, um, yeah, they keep pushing 4K and all that sort of thing, but that's not the fucking standard. I think by 2020 it will be, and in 2020 it, it should be. No. 4K will never be the fucking. Oh, let's shit. let's okay, do this. Head. Head. Let's, 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 ah. let's do this. Let's do this shave head bed. Someone take no because we, oh, we were so talking. Matt and I. Oh, yeah, Matt okay. and I um, had a. Uh, she. We were giving each other shit. He had his hair down. He looked like Jesus. Um, so we're gonna do a. Uh, we're gonna do a bet. <laughs> we're gonna do a bet. I'm not gonna shave my head for two months. No. Uh, sorry. No. For, no. No. Uh, no. 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 Oh, Matt's right, going to shave his head. Here's, here's the thing, right? right? If Matt's right, you have to not shave your head. <laughs> for six months. For six months. Great hair. Can you even... Can if, you you're right, if you're okay, right... If you're right... Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. If like, you're right, if you're right, Matt has to shave his head. So between so, now and 2020, if there is an announcement saying that Destiny 3 is 60 frames per second, or 30 frames per second, one of us is going to win. Yep. Wait, when? Between now and when? <laughs> 2020. Between, we need, Between we need. now and the Jesus. Destiny 3, uh, the, the Destiny 3 technical info if, release. If Let's go Destiny 3 is on consoles at 60 FPS, yep. Slothy grows his hair. And if yep. not, Matt shaves his head. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, just, just so in the chat, guys, the beards are uh, off limits. Yeah, we don't do yeah. the beards anymore, and I'm not dressing as a woman again. We've got all beard. the memes we could possibly get out of me dressing as a woman and singing songs. Let's fucking leave it. Oh, God. There, there, there's, there is, there is a couple things. I know we're like we're pushing like already our time limit, and I, I want to check out a couple different things. Um, yep. I think there is a difference between starting a small game company and growing and growing into being a self publisher. And there's a difference between that and being backed by the biggest publisher in the world, Activision Blizzard, and then getting rid of them. Now, the reason why I say this is being going to the Bungie studios. I I just feel like before I went there, you just have an image of Bungie, right? It's like your community managers, your Deej, your Cosmo, your DMG, and then you've got, you know, your sandbox team, your Crucible guys, right? Like In your mind, you've just said, that's Bungie. You stand outside Bungie doors and during lunchtime and watch the just stream of people, of how many employees go in and out of that door 
and you're like, this is a really big company. <laughs> this is a really, <laughs> I know that's an understatement, but yeah, there's a real big company. There's a lot of people that work. I think, I think they're either the biggest now, like independent or, or yeah, second is, to, to, to someone. Um, and they have to, like someone said in chat, they got to keep the lights on. So, I, you know, th and this is why I think back to my very first sentence. We are under the assumption that Bungie will make better moral and ethical decisions compared to the corporate giant. The expenses have not gone away. They still have to make a game. They still have to maintain yeah. the people that work there and they still have to release content. I, and I now think the go, thing, I so, think the thing that... Obviously, only thing is obviously they've said we've got that money. We've either got that investment, we've got that capital, or we can do that. They obviously are confident that they can do that. Mm -hmm. Or they're gonna fire a fuck ton of people. I don't think that's the case. <laughs> I, think, I don't think they're gonna do that. I think they're gonna pick it up. I think the difference between Bungie and Activision in terms of ethics, and look, Activision are a company, Bungie are a company, sure. But there's the whole onus of Activision reporting to shareholders. And all of those like nasty reports yeah. we hear that they're not happy and all of that comes back to growth because shareholders expect continual growth. Bungie, yeah. as a company that is not publicly listed, doesn't have that consideration. Destiny every single fucking year doesn't need to be improving on the year before. Yeah. Sure, they, they just want gotta it to. make sure they pay the bills, right? They just need yeah. to make sure they pay. It's a real different, different expenses. philosophical thing. And I just wholly it's stole that off Etz last night. He's much smarter than me, and we were talking about it. So that's he's much more intelligent. Yeah. Look, um, I think we've we've nearly done our dash on this. I think we don't know all that much. We're all just sitting here speculating, and that's great. We're all excited. We all think that the future can bring big things. But let's just quickly go through which subclasses are going to be nerfed in the coming update that we're in the twelve, and then we're going to wrap it up. Okay. Um, cool oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even care. Who cares? Just before this, log, just before you do, do close it out, um, what I would like to say is that when Bungie do finally go independent, it's time for the Destiny community to put their money where their mouth is. If they do well, support the company. If they don't do well, support the company because we love the game and we want Bungie to make the best Destiny that we can. More than happy to buy silver if I know it's going to Bungie. True. That yeah, does I'm change sorry. that decision as well, hey? But I mean, you yeah, know what, Slothy, I'll make you a deal. That, that is, that's oh, true as well. You need, to, you need to stump up and when people are questioning the value of their spend, you can take them on on Twitter because I'm fucking done with that. That's a, <laughs> that's a very, that's a very uh, valid point by degraded nut as well. To play devil's advocate, what if Activision let Bungie go because they were not happy with Bungie's earnings, which they have already said that they weren't. Um, uh, if they're cutting costs and trimming fat, they might let them go and gave them independence and Bungie agreed. Because they believe they can do a lot, uh, do a lot themselves, uh, do it themselves, and that makes me a lot, uh, makes me nervous. Um, just with that, I don't think uh, Activision were trimming the fat because they lost twelve percent on their stocks. I yeah, don't and, think and that. Destiny Two for all the disappointment, it was still the fucking top earning game in end of two thousand and eighteen console yeah. or whatever. It was still whatever, like it still broke records. Not good, records. Good it's point, still though. it's still outperformed other games. As as Log said, like we are we are, we are at this point of speculating on what happened and what's going to happen yeah. in the future and all that sort of thing. Good point, mate. Good point. I, I do I do think that is a very valid point to think about. But just with the information that we have, the twelve percent loss is a fucking huge loss. <laughs> it's cool. a kick Activision. in the guts. I think I think look, Activision as a company are fighting fires on multiple fronts. Bungie. Yep was probably ready to go, you know, like they would have been ready for this. Like you look at the shit that's going on between Activision, Activision and Blizzard now and there's executives leaving left, right and centre and all sorts of shit fights hey. going on and I'm not going to touch it with someone else's dick to be slack. I'm just going to leave it and say thank you very much, Activision, because without you, Destiny probably wouldn't yeah. exist. Uh, and that's about it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. All the best. I hope the next COD is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know good on them, whatever. But we've talked ourselves to a standstill. And 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 as promised, Blade Barrage and Nova Warp are getting nerfed in their coming update. So <laughs> suck <So> yeah. <laughs> um so I went through the notes this morning. So you move slower when you are charging um Nova Warp. 
which is good. I don't know what the speeds it, are. They it, haven't really put that it's down. It's very slow. <laughs> um, so uh, confession time. Um, I only run over warp unless um, someone forces me to not run over warp. Um, I'm going to disconnect now. I'm just yeah. <laughs> I'm done. On that, on that note, on that note uh, let's, we're going to wrap up the podcast. <laughs> look, I haven't, no, on, I haven't stupid... Oh, wait, no, hang on. The changes aren't in effect until January 29th? Yeah. Look, what, we, what we're going to actually do in terms of the podcast and talking about this sort of stuff, there will be a detailed patch notes that will be released with in conjunction with that like update. So we're going to go through it then. The same as going through it now in a massive bumper episode and then doing it again in a few weeks anyway. So don't sweat. We're going to talk about it. But really, the long wow. story short, sorry to cut you off, Tom, but okay. the supers that are getting buffed, Golden Gun, Shadow Shot, Arc Staff, Burning Maw, Hammer of Soul, Fist of Havoc, Sentinel Shield, Nova Bomb, and Daybreak. The uh, ones that are being deleted from the game are Blade Barrage and Nova Warp. Fist of Havoc! <laughs> 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 What is the damage decrease? I don't like, care. Oh, I don't care. Decrease. I couldn't um, care less. So I know that's bad. Ladies and gentlemen, it's <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, thank you uh, to uh, Tom for coming on the podcast and telling us about his website and all that sort of thing and, and just coming on and having a chat, dude. Thank you so much. Dude, yeah. And, you, you, um, and yeah. using the signal. Yeah. That you were... <laughs> I think thank we're going to have to make that much. a thing from now on. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, thank you. Thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Guys, make sure you go check out Tom, uh, twitter.com forward slash just real milk. Just real milk. Milk. As the ad says. Like real milk. Um, mm-hmm. So make sure you go check him out. Make sure you use Braytech. Is there a uh, donation link on your website, Tom? Maybe. If you corner. feel that Braytech <laughs> is is done, it, honestly, if it, if it helps you with anything that you've done in regards to tracking that you like the shit that you missed, like eggs and lore and all that sort of thing, drop him a co- drop him a fiver for a coffee or a beer or something like that. Um, uh, it, it, just think about it. Just think about it. Like it, it keeps the website up and it is a very very handy tool. It's the same same um, with Richard Devereaux, uh, low lines. Um, make sure that you like you help out these guys and uh, nice. Dim Ishtar Commander. Like they're they're all there to passion. help you, and, and it is a passion. So uh, if you feel that you uh, feel the need to give them a uh, give them a tip, then um, please do so on their websites. Nice. Um, yeah. Guys, uh, thank you very much to our live audience for stopping by once again and asking questions and talking to us and 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 all that sort of thing and just watching us uh, go through semi-serious conversations and then just yelling at each other and and logs rant and all that sort of thing. I hope uh, I hope that was I hope you enjoyed it. Um, your uh, continued support here on Twitch is is really really awesome. If you're watching on YouTube. Make sure you hit that bell. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and let us know what you think about it in the comments below. <laughs> can, I, can I do that? Um, can I do that? Can I do that? Uh, if you'd like to support this video but don't have a comment, <laughs> can you, go on, what's you, the can, comment? you can you can leave. Just leave the, the phrase freedom. <laughs> freedom. <laughs> perfect. Um, perfect. So yeah, leave the comment freedom if you don't if you if you don't have anything to say. Uh, let us know what time you think the podcast podcast started as well. Um, if you're watching, if you're sorry, if you're listening on um, on uh, Podbean, uh, Podbean, Podbean, and and or any Spotify of the audio or platforms, like that, yeah. any of the audio only stuff. Thank you for your continued patronage as well. It's really really cool that you guys um, listen to us on the way to work, on the way home from work, um, just while you're going to sleep or whatever it's fantastic thank you so much and jump into discord um, jump into discord and talk to us because we're in there like if, if you yeah. you know like i understand that there's that sort of separation where you know you listen to the show and you think you know i'll listen to this show but you like seriously we, we're pretty approachable dudes so if you jump in there and you have something to say there's already a pretty solid little community going on in there so be part of it, and... it. yeah um guys we have been the Destiny Down Under podcast. Uh, this, it is uh, for the, the, the 12th of January, 2019. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let us know what you think. Follow us on Twitter. Follow our solo streams if you feel so inclined. And uh, we'll catch you next week. Stand Sound by good? for a raid. Go, Maddie. The, um, Shout out to Water Polo. The law will no longer find you. The oh. Grimoire Anthology was published by Blizzard Publishing. So- <laughs> <laughs>
catch up. <laughs> yeah. F, F for respects. <laughs> press, press F for law books. Respect. Oh, man. It was a good run while it lasted, brother. Stand oh, by for a <laughs>